Hello YouTube, I'm Kevin Tetz, you're all wonderful, and today we're getting into the second week of Season 2's Weekly Challenges, working toward that eventual goal of the Rotten Inferno camo. Now, along the way to that reward, we'll be unlocking each of the eight weeks' individual rewards by completing five of the Weekly Challenges. My goal, as always, is to get five challenges completed in one game of Zombies. Now, before we check out the challenges, I wanted to quickly thank everyone for the likes, the comments, the views, the interaction in general with all of my videos thus far. It means, honestly, the world to me, and I hope it also means that people are getting something out of the videos that I'm making. Now, the other thing you may notice, if you look over here, you're gonna see there's like one thing that says completed, there's a thing down here that says completed. And it's because there were some technical issues when I was recording my Zombies game and recording all of this previously. Uh, what, what happened was I had no sound. I've got all the video, absolutely no sound. So I'm re-recording the intro. We're going to go over some of the things that I've unlocked afterward. And I'm really just going to kind of narrate over the Zombies game itself, especially as it relates to some of the important points that I found as I was going through. Now, what I was saying during that, that game, I do not recall. I'll do my best to remember what I was saying, but it's, it's gonna be, at best, reading my own lips to try to figure out what I was thinking in the moment. Uh, importantly, this week we are unlocking the Jack Limb Ripper, which is on the other side of the screen there, and it is a, it's an underbarrel chainsaw. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the name alone is fantastic and the attachment is incredibly intriguing. So we'll take a look at that a little bit later once we have it unlocked from that Zombies game. Uh, spoiler alert, we do unlock it. You can see that I've already completed stuff. It's, it's not really a spoiler. It's all literally right over here. Now, I had, to, I had to double check over here to find out that it was over there, but it's, it's over there. It tells you that it's completed. Looking first to the multiplayer challenges for the week, we're looking at 30 kills with alternate ammo on a recommended weapon, 10 kills with the gun butt of a recommended weapon, 10 point blank kills with recommended weapons, three melee kills in a life three times, 20 kills with an under barrel lethal attachment attached to a recommended weapon, 15 kills with throwing knives, and 20 finishing moves on enemies. So this week, the devs have really leaned into the toxicity of Call of Duty. Now, aside from the challenges that I've already completed, you can see that there's a little bit of progress in some of these areas, and that's just from me testing to make sure that I knew what was being asked with each of these challenges. So to start with, the alternate ammo on a recommended weapon just requires you to have an ammo attachment. For instance, I used the Holger 5.56 assault rifle and I put high grain rounds on it. That's all I did. I got six kills. They tracked properly. As it relates to the kills with a lethal attachment on the underbarrel of a recommended weapon, on that same Holger 5.56 that I got the six kills with the alternate ammo, I also attached the Jack Purifier Flamethrower underbarrel attachment. We got that in season one, I believe, through the battle pass. There are other underbarrel attachments like. Uh, the noob tube or shotgun rounds that you can attach to the underbarrel of a recommended weapon. And you have to actually get the kill with that attachment. So you have to be using the shotgun, the underbarrel shotgun, or the underbarrel grenade launcher. Finally, looking at the operator kills with the gun butt of a weapon, that just requires a melee attack when you're holding a gun itself. You can't be using a recommended melee weapon, for instance, and get those gun butt kills. Looking over to the challenges for Warzone, we've got some pretty standard ones that we've seen in the past. We've got to open 20 loot caches in four different areas for a total of 80 loot caches. Those four areas are going to be the northwestern region, the central region, the southern region, and the eastern region. In addition, you're looking at placing top 10 five times. That's you or your squad, and it does count for resurgence. Uh, it also counts for ranked resurgence, super important. Uh, completing 15 contracts that also tracks through ranked resurgence i know that ranked resurgence has been very popular with people and so i want to make sure that everyone's aware that your your progress that doesn't relate to urzikstan will track through those ranked matches and then finally 40 operator kills or assists with recommended weapons you can see that i've already gotten a few of those done and that's just from grinding out ranked resurgence last but not least we're heading over to the challenges for zombies and over in zombies we're looking at 50 kills with a recommended melee weapon while frenzied guard is active 500 critical kills with a recommended weapon 
250 kills with a recommended weapon using fire damage, uh, 10 kills without being hit with a recommended melee weapon 20 times. That's a lot there. 10 zombie kills specifically, not mercenary kills, zombie kills with a throwing knife. 150 kills with a recommended weapon while four perks are active and one mega abomination kill with a recommended weapon. So this, this week seems to be focused a little bit more on the lethal equipment with the throwing knives and melee weapons. My strategy going in was to completely abandon the Mega Abomination kill. That's because I knew the other six were challenges that I could get done in tiers one and two, and I wouldn't have to bother venturing into tier three. In addition to that, I was gonna bring in the four perks that I regularly bring in. We'll take a look at those in a little bit. I was going to bring in a recommended melee weapon. I was going to bring in a recommended weapon with the Napalm Flame Ammo Mod. In addition to that, I wanted to make sure that I had Frenzied Guard equipped as my field upgrade and make sure that I had the throwing knives equipped for those zombie kills. All right, so before I go over the rest of the loadout, I did want to take a quick moment just to show off the Tac Evolvir that I kitted out to drop in with in this game. And no, I did not want to show it off because I have a Golden Enigma, although I am very proud of that. Instead, what I wanted to show off was the build itself. I went with the SA Kilanova stock, the Demo Clean Shot Grip, the Aftac Grimline Laser, the Bruin Pivot Vertical Grip, and the Cassis Break. And the reason I did those specifically was because Fireborn put out a video where he talked about a secret uh, I think I think he called it a secret, maybe a hidden stat that people weren't taking full advantage of, and that was the firing aim stability when you're building out a gun. So I took this gun and built it out for almost nothing but uh, firing aim stability, and I want you to see how it performed. So looking at this gun in the firing range, you can see that there is going to be very little visual recoil, and that's what that firing aim stability relies on. Now, this, this shot that I'm about to show you, I did no recoil control whatsoever. I, I literally did no recoil control. I used nothing but the iron sights. I ADS'd and I fired and that was it. All right, so looking at the rest of my loadout, as I mentioned before, we've got the Frenzied Guard as the field upgrade. We've got the Throwing Knife as the lethal. I went with the Karambit because I'm still doing that camo grind and I need to grind out the Zircon scale for the Karambit. Likewise, I need to grind out the Zircon scale on the Tacky Valvier. It's also It also got a buff for Warzone and multiplayer, so I wanted to get more used to using that just in general. And I knew that with it having a buff and having such low recoil, I was going to be able to really take advantage of that as it relates to the critical kills that we're searching for with the zombies. Looking at the rucksack itself that I'm bringing in, We've got the four perks that I usually run, which is Deadshot Daiquiri, Speed Cola, Stamina Up, and Juggernog. I also brought in a Rare Ether Tool and a Raw Ethereum Crystal for both of the weapons, and that flame, the Napalm Flame Ammo mod that we had discussed needing to get kills for the, the weekly challenge there. My first thought dropping into the game was getting an Outlast contract or an Escort contract, and that's because that would spawn zombies for me and bring the zombies to me. The one thing that I wanted to do before I had to worry about that though, was I did want to hunt down 10 zombies to kill with the lethal throwing equipment, the, the throwing knife. And the reason I wanted to do that was because I didn't want to lose the throwing knife and all the chaos of having a bunch of zombies around me. Uh, one of the benefits of the throwing knife is that it's reusable. You can run to wherever you threw it, as you can see I'm doing here, and you can actually pick it back up and use it again. That's also the reason why you're going to see shortly, I end up clearing this challenge in under five minutes. And I included this so that you can see, even if you miss those throws, which I've never missed a throw in my life, that's the first time ever. Uh, even if you miss those throws with the throwing knife, you can still run over to wherever it dropped and pick it back up. And just like that, we nailed it. We got the weekly challenge done. Like I said, under five minutes, we still got 41 minutes, 20 seconds left on the timer. So we're making great time here. We're 20% of the way done with those five challenges that we aim to get done in the single game. 
Now you can see we've got somebody over here who's willing to help us out a little bit. You can also see I've got that Frenzy Guard active and ready. So as soon as all of these zombies spawn, I'm immediately going to use Frenzy Guard and just go ham with the Karambit. You can also see we've still got the Zombie Bones event going on where you have to collect, I believe it's 10,000 Zombie Bones. The cool thing about that is they never updated it so that it reads properly. We clear out the contract for the escort. And again, the guys who are around me are not on my squad. I don't know who they are. They just decided to kind of tag along. But either way, finish the contract for the escort. And at, after that, I give these guys the one of the ether tools, so something from the reward rift, rift that I got. And then I start looking for the next contract. My my thought, like I said, is Escorts and Outlast. Those are the two things that I need to focus on. I've got all of the perks that I need. I've got all of the uh, the ammo mods I need. I've got all of the equipment that I need. It's just a matter of getting the zombie kills at this point. What I ended up doing was making my way over to the other side of the map, still on the north edge, and using this Outlast here. Uh, this, this Outlast is gonna take me over near the water and I will be able to get all of the zombies that I want to come to me. The important thing to remember with Outlast, with Outlast contracts, it's one that continually has zombies spawn no matter what. So the spore control contracts used to have unlimited spawns. I believe there was another one that you could kind of uh, exploit to have more spawns. I don't wanna say exploit as though you're like taking advantage of a bug, it's the way it was coded, but you, there were, there were contracts you could take advantage of to guarantee perpetual spawns of zombies. And all of those have been removed in one way or another, except for the Outlast contract. The Outlast contract will continue to spawn zombies. One thing you can't see because my face is in front of it, and if I move my face, you're just going to see the webcam of my face from when I recorded this, is... <laughs> You have a, a percentage meter that indicates your progress in the Outlast contract. When that's all the way up, the contract is over, you have succeeded. When you leave the crystallized area here, that meter will go back down. Even if that meter hits zero, you're still going to be spawning zombies. Now you may see that we're getting a specialized drop from the Hellhounds this week. That is the Hellhound Skulls for the zombie bones event. So you can you can get zombie bones. As you can see, the zombies are still dropping bones. You can get hellhound skulls and you can get armored zombie skulls. All of those are available. For this week, for the uh, hellhound skulls, you only need 300 of them. One thing I remembered while I was just kind of grinding out these kills for the Outlast contract was, there were, was that there were a lot of posts online last week about the weekly challenge where you had to get 10 kills without being hit with a recommended assault rifle 20 times. Uh, that was one of the challenges that I actually failed at using an MCW off of a wall buy. And that's why I reached the determination that maybe the wall buys weren't counting properly. I saw a lot of pictures uh, that people had posted online where they had, they were, they were counting toward the, the target, but it was never completed. And so I saw one person had literally, I think it was 120 out of 20 times that they had to get it done. And it just kept ticking up for them, but never actually completing. The one thing I did to get it to work, I brought in a Holger 5.56 recommended assault rifle, and I used that. I used that, I made sure that I did it properly, and it seemed to work for me. Just like right there, using the TAC Evolver, got me the proper 250 kills with a recommended weapon with fire damage. Made sure that I collected those Hellhound Skulls. Now, this that reminds me actually, one of the other things that I saw online this past week was someone saying that those little bombs there are not called nukes. He said that they were called kabooms. And his justification for that, if you, if you want to entertain it, is that the announcer voice says kaboom when you collect it. The problem with that, well, I punched a hellhound 30 feet into the air. The problem with that is 
the the screen when you collect when you collect a collectible like that not only does the announcer tell you what it is but you also have a text readout that says what it is right so when you collect double points the announcer says double points and you see the little text that reads double points when you collect that bomb the text reads nuke it doesn't read kaboom so it's a nuke to me that's a nuke let me know what you think in the comments below is it a nuke or is it a kaboom my strategy with the frenzied guard kills was to get all of the zombies into a group as much as I could, making sure I didn't have any hellhounds because they were going to run faster, and then triggering that frenzied guard and attacking them with the uh, karambit as quickly as I could. The karambit is one of the recommended melee weapons. I believe the karambit and gutter and gutter knife are both recommended this season. So just remember, whatever you do, you're double checking to make sure you have that little flame icon to indicate that you're using a recommended weapon. And, oh, look at that. Right there, it tells us that that's a nuke. You also saw that we, we did end up meeting the challenge for the, the week as it relates to those frenzied guard kills. What did you say in the comments, by the way? Did you say nuke or did you say kaboom? Either way, whatever you said, make sure you drop a like. Now, what I decided for the Outlast contract was that I was just going to farm the critical kills here out of this steady stream of zombies until I got 500 which is what we did right there. That also means we hit all five of the weekly challenges that we planned on doing. Obviously, we had the one left over where we could get 10 kills without being hit with a recommended weapon 20 times, but that just didn't seem likely. And that's what I'm trying to do here, but it's just, it's not working out. Once I got the critical kills though, I started farming kills with the Karambit because like I said before I, I started the game, I was still trying to get the Zircon scale camo for the Karambit, uh, which means that I was in a little bit of a, um, of a competing interest between the Tac Evolvir and the Karambit. There were a bunch of things that I needed to do with the melee weapon, but there was also a lot that I needed that Tac Evolvir for. So something like this, uh, this contract where I have a steady stream of zombies really helps to do that. There's no downtime like there is with the exfil strategy where you're farming exfils and you're not so overwhelmed that you can't take advantage of a of, of the zombies that you do have like you would find in an escort contract so with that escort contract it's great if you need a lot of kills quickly but if you need something specific like critical kills the escort contract may not be the one for you or if you need kills like with a melee weapon where you're, where you're trying to avoid getting hit, it's just not gonna happen with that escort contract. Now, even though I just said that the exfil strategy isn't the best, I did end up heading over to an exfil just to finish farming the last remaining kills that I would need for that Zircon scale for the Karambit, and so that I was there quickly, so that I was right there at an exfil if the storm started rolling in. As you can see here, we get that Zircon scale. I'm not worried about it anymore. I've got a bunch of extra uh, Casimirs, so I toss one out. We get on the, the Exfil, and we're ready to leave. Just like that, you see we got that successful Exfil. Feels great. It feels great to get that done, to know that I met the challenge of getting all five done in one Zombies game. Just feels great. All right, lastly, as we always do, we're going to take a look at that Limb Ripper out here. We can see the inspect right here. I've got it attached to the BP-50, one of the new uh, assault rifles for this season, also recommended. You can see it's sticking out the front there almost like a bayonet. Uh, there's no special interaction with it when we've, got, when we've got the attachment on. Let's go ahead and activate it. You activate it on controller just by hitting left on the D-pad. And we're going to do another inspect here. And we actually do take a look a little bit closer at that limb ripper. Now, one thing that I did not expect is even if you are using your weapon as a weapon, if you go to melee, you use the limb ripper and you are slashing and you are poking with it. You're doing a poke and a slash. And the other thing is if you actually have the chainsaw out, and I love in the bottom right, you can see that when we flip between the 556 five, NATO and the limb ripper, it, it tells us that we're using the chainsaw. If you use the chainsaw instead, 
We are just going to town. I, okay, I did not realize that it turns red when you use it, and that is fun. Uh, you can see that it does have its own, its own kind of destructive properties over here, and that, that happens on the glass. It happens on the metal in the firing range. This firing range is just a testament to how irresponsible I can be with a weapon in my hands. Uh, obviously, we can't use it on the training dummies, but you can see that it's a lot of fun there. And if you had a lot of fun, I hope you like the video. I hope you hang out with me over on Twitch or catch me live here on YouTube. And other than that, I hope you stay blessed, be kind to yourselves, be kind to others. And I cannot wait to catch you in the next one.